Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Allied, and this is going to be my... It's supposed to be a Sunday, but it's Monday video log. So I'm going to make it quick, short, and sweet for everyone. I'm going to be doing this at least once a week. Ephesus on Sunday. The only reason I haven't done it the, you know, yesterday, which is actually Sunday, was because I was actually streaming. And because I was streaming, it I was streaming for nine hours, and I ended up falling asleep. I was pretty fucking tired. So what can you do? But besides that, it's actually Monday, May 11th, and I wanted to do a quick announcement. I am going to be gone from the 13th to the 18th, so I will not be streaming on those days. So I, I apologize to all the subscribers and all the people that have been watching me for the past week and something days since I've been back from the land. I just, I am going to DM Brent's wedding and I have to take care of some actual real life shit. What can you fucking do? But besides that, I'm going to be gone and I'm just going to be going to DM Brent's wedding and also, I will be playing the TSM game. Don't let it, you know, don't get it twisted. I will be there. We'll be playing on a laptop. Hopefully, I'm going to be trying out Smite on it, and it should be all good to go. So we'll be playing Smite. We'll be playing against TSM. Shouldn't miss the SPL match, and I should still be able to enjoy DM Brand's wedding. However, I will not be going to Brazil because of just problems. It was honestly, I, I think it's a big thing that it was just like, it was short notice, so I didn't have enough time to actually get my passport done because I needed my original birth certificate, and that's in New York where I used to live, but I live in Georgia. I have copies, but they wanted the actual original, which I have in New York. So, long story short, I can't get it done in time. I mean, by the time I get uh, to New York on the 13th, it's going to be too late by then. So I just, you know, deadlines are deadlines. And honestly, it was just a big thing that it was very short notice from high res to actually get it done in time because they wanted it done by, you know, very early May. But we just won the land. Like, it's very, like, I would have to expedite it, which, you know, is money out of my own pocket just to go to Brazil. And then it's, it's a whole big mess, basically. The end of the story is just, it's a whole fucking huge mess. And it was very short notice, and I'm just not going to be able to get my passport and visa done in time. However, I will start the process immediately once I get to New York, because I would like to go to future LAN events if the opportunity arises. But for now, we'll not be going to Brazil. Um, I do not know who is going to be subbing in for me, so, wh you know, whoever can sub in for me, that'd be great. And hopefully my team still wins. I mean, honestly, I'm, they're my fucking team. I just, I want them to do the best they can do, and I want AFK Esports to be known throughout the fucking region. So besides that, I'm going to be going over and say that I've been streaming every single day. So to make sure, if especially if you just watch my YouTube for whatever reason, just make sure you check out my stream, follow my Twitter, and be updated with what I do and whatever. So I'm going to be going over a quick prediction for the rest of SPL Summer. So if you guys didn't know, pretty much Legion has made it in. Enemy Esports and Eager are the new teams. Well, I, I, want, I say enemy because they lost, the, the rosters changed so much, so they're kind of like new. But pretty much those are the new teams in the NA kind of region. And as far as EU goes, Upcoming Stars is back. The Night's Watch, which is actually a really strong, scary team. They just made it to the SPL and Epsilon, which was Panthera last season. Now they are Epsilon Esports has made it into the SPL scene. So what that means is that there's going to be a whole bunch of new talent and new blood amongst the veterans and i was just going to do a quick kind of like my outlook on who's going to be on the top eight like who should win the at least the season you know not so much the land but like heading towards worlds it, I, I think this is pretty accurate on like who like the top eight teams are going to be so for europe i do have that trig is going to be absolutely number one again they had a strong season last season and i don't see why it would be any different even though Fnatic did beat them at the land i think Fnatic's a lot weaker online than they are at land and i don't think they take online as seriously as they do the land events so i think Fnatic's Fnatic. Like, they're just great land monsters. They just destroy land, right? I mean, they're very scary. Even to fight in person, you get to see their personality live and be like, damn, these guys are hungry for a fucking win. But at the same time, I think online, the personality definitely shows a lot less. And as good as they are, I think they're possibly the best team in Europe. Online, they just, I mean, for the past, like, two seasons alone, they just, they suck online. And it's not that they suck. It's just they don't. You know, they don't hold the number one spot. They lose to random teams. I mean, they, they, got, they almost got kicked out of the SPL. So it's like, Fnatic, please. You know, <laughs> but besides that, I think Fnatic, they're fucking great. I, I think they are amazing. So hopefully everything works out with them and they'll be at Worlds and they do extremely well at Worlds. But 
for as far as like the number one EU, I think that's going to be Trig. So at number two, I think Epsilon is going to be the number two spot for EU. So Epsilon, which was Panthera before they lost and they got I think they got a new mid laner Yaman, who is really good. And overall Emilito is holding it down on Hunter really well. And I think Epsilon just they're looking really strong coming out of the gate. I think they have what it takes to be a top contending EU team. I mean they didn't drop a single match leading all the way up from challengers to the SPL now, so let's see if they can keep that trend going. I might be riding the hype train, but they're looking really hot. Their picks and bans are fresh. They're not bullshit, and that's really the key emphasis. They're not bullshit, and and when I say that, I mean Europe likes to pick a lot of things that just, no offense, just really I don't get why they're picking it. And it's it's not that it's bad. Maybe they have a strategy going in with it, but Epsilon's team picking and banning phase is looking fucking hot, and they're teammates and the team synergy is looking sweet i i think they could definitely be a contender for the number two spot but then again you know don't hold me to it anything can happen i, I don't know like much about the european scene for number three spot i have fanatic i and it's not that they're any worse than epsilon i just could see in a in you know best of two match i think epsilon could get a game or two off fanatic so which is why i have them on the number three spot and it's not sure like it's not that epsilon's the better team or whatever, like, I, I personally don't think so, but I think that Epsilon could definitely throw off Fnatic enough, and we've seen this time and time again where Fnatic gets thrown off by other teams online, and it's, you know, because of X, Y, and Z, I don't know, they just, they just fucking lose, it happens. Now, for the number four spot is Titan, and I think Titan's still a strong team, it seems like they're a little rocky right now, especially with season two, I mean, they didn't make it to the last land where they were expected to at least make the top two to get into it, but I think Titan's still a top four team, it's just they need to work a little bit harder, and hopefully they can step it up, but for right now, just by what I've seen, I have them on number four. Number five, I have Team Dignitas. Team Dignitas, they were the only team to actually beat Trig last season, but after that, just lost a whole bunch of times because of... I don't fucking know. They just lost. And I don't know if it was just poor strategy or they weren't committed enough, but just based off of that alone, off of pure speculation, I think they're just going to be a solid number five. And then right below that, I will put London Conspiracy. I don't know much what's been going on with London Conspiracy. I will say, however, Shaggy Shank is one of my favorite AD carries out of EU, right next to Reels. And I, I think he has the potential to carry that team, but really it's going to come down to good team synergy and teamwork to get past that number six spot so I, i'm really curious to see what sun touch and the boys actually you know have in store for us in the spl season and then right under them i have the knights watch even though they looked really hot i just don't know how well they will do i mean they have nq and nq is a beast and everything and they have really good players but i i just want to see how they do against the veterans you know uh, obviously knights watch i think it's more of like a, a like they could either be the best team or the worst team. I, I can't really see them being in between. So unless they just destroy the opposition, I think my where I'm going to put them is at least the number 7 spot. But once again, just don't don't hurt me on this because I don't know much about Europe, Europe besides like, you know, Trig and Fnatic. Those are the only teams I had to study for going into the land, so I don't know much on like what each team can bring to the table. So, whatever. Now, for number 8, I mean, obviously, it's upcoming stars, and that's because they just, they they got, like, last place last season. I mean, they just, I mean, not uh, last split. They just weren't doing good. They just, I don't know. And they barely even made it back into the SPL during their match. I mean, they won 3-2 against the, the other fucking guys. I don't even know their fucking names. So, I, I apologize once again for my lack of knowledge on the European scene, but honestly, those are my honest expectations. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen whatever but now i'm going to be going over the north american uh scene so for number one at least for the rest of the split into worlds uh the summer split into worlds i think tsm is still going to be number one despite the fact that we went over them and land i think tsm online is the much stronger team and it's not that they could easily beat us uh that they can easily beat us again or whatever but I mean, we'll see. We have to play them first anyway, so, like, we'll see. But I think overall TSM has a way stronger strategy, and it generally suits to beat all the other teams in NA a lot easier on, you know, the online portion. I think on land, the nerves definitely got to them, and it showed, especially when I watched over the games again, you could tell that they were making a lot of mistakes that I don't, like, you wouldn't expect them to make in an online setting, in your comfort zone, right? And I think that's fair to say. Like, they definitely were 
a little bit on tilt, especially after they lost the first game. So, I don't know. Maybe TSM could bring it back, and I mean, maybe TSM could be beaten. But I, I just, I, I think it's safe to say that TSM is probably a strong number one contender going into the summer split. Hopefully, we beat them. Hopefully, I mean, we'll see. For number two, I have us, uh, AFK. I hope AFK as as far as us. I think we're looking really good. I mean, we just won the land. We're fucking people. It's looking pretty good. I don't know. I got a fucking pentakill. I mean, I mean, I, I think I have the, the right to be a little bit cocky here, but we'll see. We'll see. And then for number three, I have Eager. Eager, uh, a lot of people are probably wondering, like, why Cloud9 is, you know, anywhere under Eager. Well, Eager is our scrim partners. They're the reason we won the fucking land. I mean, they're... They're scary, even against their mat their show matches against High Five. They won 3-0 very solidly, and it's not that High Five is like a bad team, whatever. They're definitely not up to par to Eager, but it just shows the amount of strategy they have in their picks. And I think just because they're our scrim partners alone, they they have a good chance to beat Cloud9 or TSM in the top four spot. And then obviously for number four, I have Cloud9, and it's not that Cloud9 is any bit like any worse. Is my biggest complaint with Cloud9 is they've been running the same strategy since season fucking one. I mean, you know, protect MLC stealth. Anister gets super fed. Shut down Anister. You win the game. Like it's just that's just how Cloud9 works. Omega plays Vamana. Like we all get it, right? And it's not. I'm not taking away from Cloud9, and this is no BM towards Cloud9. I think they're a very talented team. I would just like to see them go out of their comfort zone a little bit. I mean, I mean, I hope they don't. I mean, they're just I'm just saying, like, like that that probably would help them expand a little bit in in terms of uh, placing better or like not losing to us, whatever, right? <laughs> so besides that, I think Cloud 9s a very strong team still. They could, they could still very easily be a top two team. It just we you know we just have to see. I mean, summer splits gonna be crazy. So number five, I have the Nile Shing and the boys. I mean, they've gone through some changes. Mama Mark has to pretty much retired because of school purposes which you know whatever like i mean that doesn't affect me but that sucks for shing and the boys you know they can't fucking do shit about that so shadow q uh, apparently shadow q announced that they recently got a new soul laner as well because the best quit and mem and mark quit at the same time so mem and mark is replaced with bronx bombers who was originally on enemy esports this was this was just very recent so we'll see and honestly with change you have to kind of build up synergy, I feel like. So I don't think Denial is going to be that strong. I mean, they might still have their cheesy starts, and they might still take a game or two off certain teams here and there. But overall, I feel like they aren't going to be a top contender. I don't know. I just I don't see it. Maybe I'm wrong, but, uh, I mean, uh, unless, like, their first match, they just, you know, the first couple of matches, they destroy everyone. I, I don't know if they'll be in the top four. But I, I still think they are better than the rest. And... For number six, I have Legion. Now, Legion, they just recently made it to the SPL. They were the number two seeded team in the Challenger Cup, and they won their match, and they rightfully earned their way into the SPL. And that's great. I love Legion. Uh, DJ Pernicus and the boys. Payne DeViande was our support and our coach at one point, so definitely I have experience with them. And overall, like when I see their picks and their drafts, I just feel like they are still a little bit behind in... As, as far as the drafting area, so I think that's going to affect their gameplay. And they usually don't be eager, so I don't really see them being a top team, and I don't know how they would be able to handle the top four if they they can't beat eager. And also, Denial has the potential of upsetting them, because, I mean, from from like what my memory serves, I pretty much Denial, they're the noob stompers. Like, and it's not that Legion's noobs by any means, it's just like they eat up fresh meat. And Denial's like the best team for doing that because of their cheesy fucking strategies. So I think Legion's a strong number six team, but they definitely have potential of taking matches off any of the top teams given the right picks and strategies that go in with it. Now, for number seven, I have Cog, And the reason I have Cog there is because they lost to the Jungler Mask, which even though everyone's like Mask was BM, this, that, and the other, Mask was still a really strong part of their team, and he was a really strong jungler. So having Homofe, it's really all up to Homofe on how the team is going to perform. I think Meerkat isn't up to the other Soul Laner expectations as far as the rest of the SPL team. So no shots towards him. I just I, I don't think he like he's not quite there yet. As far as their AD carry, I think, I, I don't know, I, I just feel like Famous Hate, he's like right there, but he's not, like, I don't know, like, Cog's just, 
mixed feelings right now with COG. So I, I just think they're on the lower end of the spectrum, and I think they're definitely a lower uh, seeded team for right now. And then Enemy Esports, I think Enemy Esports, just because of all the roster changes, losing their star player Bronx Bombers, I just I don't see good things for them. As, as good as Soul Shatter is, and you know my old teammate Jervy is just I don't really see them going too far, honestly. So they're gonna need they really have to work their asses off if they want to keep in the NA scene at least. So at least that was kind of my predictions. I don't, hope the video wasn't too long for you, and I'm sorry if I stumbled over some of my words. I haven't done this in a while, so I do apologize. But I'm gonna be working on making more content, at least one video per day, even if it's the worst production quality i'm still working on it it's it's a work in progress but i have to thank you guys once again for watching and just supporting me throughout all of this it's been rough but you know making the esports gamer dream it is alive and well so thank you guys so much for the support and i hope you subscribe and that is it i'm out peace